So recently I've become fascinated with Penn Central. After doing the video on the Boston Yard accident, I decided to learn more about Penn Central's wacky incidents during its short lifespan. And I've decided to cover another interesting topic called the fire in the sky. But before we get to that, I'd like to point out something that I didn't mention in the last video. Um, the audio quality is bad, yes, I understand that. I'm sorry about that, I will re-record it whenever I get a chance, but I was moving around a lot while I was recording it, and I was also experimenting, trying to remove my CPU fan from the background, which is very loud. So, that's the reason why. And we also have an update. We finally figured out what the third unit was, and this is courtesy of PGH Train Spotter, uh, who says the third unit was Penn Central 2933 a U30B, which you can see right here. So thank you for that. I greatly appreciate someone actually understanding what the engine was. And like I said before, U30Bs didn't live too long, so there's a likelihood it was scrapped. But anywho, let's get on to the topic of today's video, the fire in the skies. So before we get started, I'd like to say that I'm terrible with names. I think we've already covered that in my previous video on Penn Central, but this time I've done my research on how this is actually pronounced, so I'm going to do the best I can. So this is about the Poughkeepsie Railroad Bridge, which caught fire on May 8th, 1974, which ironically enough was how Penn Central went for most of its career. <laughs> the Poughkeepsie Rail Bridge, which is in Poughkeepsie, New York City, was originally built in 1899 as a way to cross the Hudson River. It was originally owned and operated by the New York Central until they got merged with the Pennsylvania Railroad and the New Haven Railroad to form Penn Central. This accident occurred on May 8, 1974, after an eastbound freight train had crossed the bridge. For 45 to 50 minutes, the blaze went undetected until a resident looked out of their window and saw billowing smoke coming from the railroad bridge. I didn't notice anything, any uh, anything wrong with the train. There was nothing, nothing smoking, no overheating wheels, anything like that. Maybe 45 minutes later, and I looked into Poughkeepsie, and I could see this big, huge cloud of black smoke coming up over the trees to which they called the fire department of Poughkeepsie. However, several different city firefighters were on the scene at the time, and they say the acrid smell of thick black smoke that lingered over Poughkeepsie, Highland Railroad Bridge, was unforgettable. I was off that day, and I just happened to see a lot of smoke in the air, and I didn't know where it's come from, but it looked like a big fire in the city. So I happened to call the alarm station. I asked the dispatcher there, what do you got burning? Dispatcher says, the railroad bridge is on fire was able to go up on Parker Avenue up on top and that's where they put me to work because they need a lot of hose stretched. Now here's where the crazy part of this story comes into play. As you can see in these pictures, the Poughkeepsie Rail Bridge is, well, it's fairly tall and there was a genuine risk of being up there while the fire was ongoing. You see, the surface of the bridge was made up of 90% wood and the only metal objects were the rails themselves and the girders. There was a genuine fear that the wood would give way and the firefighters would fall to their deaths, and the worst case scenario was that the entire bridge would collapse in on itself, taking everyone with it and destroying many things more in the town below. It got to a point where there was too many guys on a bridge at one time and they were afraid of, it, of a lot of it collapsing. For hours, pieces of burned wood planks and metal plates almost a foot long cascaded off the bridge to property below including parts of U.S. Route 9. Embers from the bridge caused dozens of small fires at nearby homes and yards. Every once in a while you'd see a big piece of railroad tie come crashing down and the, uh, the railroad spikes would, you know, as the ties burned away. And then every once in a while when one of the big pieces of the tie plates came down, they'd come crashing down. If they hit some of the steel work of the supports, it, it would sound like a big giant bell or gong going off, you know, because they were hitting so hard. Meanwhile, the bridge was still burning like a Roman candle. Firefighters had to think fast. 
They couldn't work on the deck of the bridge anymore due to the fact there was no room to stand on apart from the rails, which in some cases were reported to be glowing red with heat. However, firefighters came up with an ingenious idea. Standing atop a 100-foot ladder, now retired Arlington firefighter Richard Fishwick blasted water upward from a hose underneath the bridge to cool the hot metal before it dropped to the ground. Arlington provided mutual aid at the scene of the fire, as did Highland firefighters on the bridge. By the end of the day, the fire was out. But there was one big question. What would happen to the bridge now? I remember standing with a bunch of railroad guys down at the Poughkeepsie train station, and there was one guy down there that worked in the track department. He says, you know, kid, you'll never ever see a train go across that bridge again. And he was absolutely right. Well, it was originally abandoned by Penn Central, and the bridge was acquired by Conrail two years after the blaze when Penn Central was dissolved and Conrail was created by the U.S. government, which later sold the bridge for one dollar. I am not making this up, they sold the bridge for one dollar. By the 1990s, the U.S. Coast Guard asked to tear it down. However, the bridge is now known as the walkway over the Hudson. In the early 2000s, the New York government decided to create the abandoned Penn Central Bridge into a essentially rail trail across the Hudson River. So that's well good to know. It at least got an extended life and a new lease on it. With all that being said, there's one big question left. What started this inferno? Was it terrorists? A disgruntled employee? Freak accident? It seems to be the latter as it was determined that sparks from train wheels were the likely cause of the inferno, which is honestly mind-boggling to think that such tiny sparks could start such a massive fire. As I said in the beginning of the video, I'm interested in Penn Central's accidents, and this is no exception. Before I even started doing my research on this video, I had no idea about the bridge itself. I didn't know that it was there. I didn't know that it was actually a railroad bridge. I didn't even know about the fire until a few months ago. And also I'd like to apologize for this being a month late. I know I said I would try to push it out as soon as possible, but I got caught up in a lot of stuff. But regardless, what do I want to do for these videos? I'd like to continue to pick apart Penn Central's colorful history and hopefully be able to, you know, figure out certain accidents that are wacky and interesting. And this one was no exception. Because how often do you hear of a fire on a railroad bridge that's 200 feet above a town below? That, that sounds pretty crazy to me. But anyway, that covers our story of the fire in the sky. I hope you guys enjoyed this video because apparently you really enjoyed the last Penn Central video. It it actually blew up, I'm not joking. Thank you all for watching that. And if you'd like me to continue making these Penn Central or Pennsylvania Railroad accident review videos, just let me know in the comments. I will certainly do that. But until then, this is Scout Snipers, signing off.